Welcome back to the Band Guide, where we use GarageBand to create professional sounding music. I'm your band guy, Colin, and today we're looking at five vocal layering techniques to elevate your vocals. Now, this is another video in the Ultimate GarageBand Beginner's Guide series. This series is walking through everything from the first time you open up GarageBand till you export out your finished, mixed, and mastered song. In fact, we've actually been recording and are about to start mixing and mastering our song together in the series. So if you haven't already seen the other videos, definitely go check those out and stick around for what's coming up next. But before we even get into it, I want to give you something. In addition to this video series, Series, I put together the ultimate garage band guide. This guide walks through recording, mixing, mastering, gear you need, shortcuts, really everything you need to know, and it's completely free from link in the description below. So be sure to pick it up. It's really going to help you out. But let's go and get into today's video looking at five vocal layering techniques. Starting with technique one, vocal doubles. Now, vocal doubles are kind of exactly what they sound like. This is where you're trying to double your vocal performance as close as you possibly can. So you would have a lead vocal and then you would be recording again, not just copying and pasting, but recording again as close as you can to that lead vocal in the same tune and same timing. And the idea here is that this will help reinforce the vocal but kind of blend into it so you don't necessarily notice it as a distinct performance. So here in our song that we've been working on, we have one lead vocal and then we have three doubles. And I've panned them where one is center and then one is off to the left and one is off to the right. So in total, you have four vocals all doing the exact same thing in this chorus, but it just helps fill it out. So let's listen to a little bit of this and then I'll take the doubles away. This is with the doubles. Every day Right? They really help fill out that vocal. Now this isn't mixed yet. That vocal would stand on its own a little bit better if it were mixed and these will blend in a little bit better when they're all mixed in. But you still get a sense of how much this is helping fill in those vocals. And it's really important that if you want that big full chorus sound that you get it right when you're recording, meaning you get all these pieces there to give yourself that big full chorus sound. So the other tip I have when it comes to vocal doubles is you can play with the arrangement of these. They don't have to always all be in. So for example, in the verse, it's pretty common to have just your lead vocal and maybe occasionally you'll have a lead vocal and a center double or just the lead vocal. Or you could try something like what we have here, which is where you have just the center vocal, but then you had the left and right come in on the tails of phrases. Check this out. And then here, everything comes in. So you can use these doubles to help the song kind of evolve and get bigger and smaller at key points, giving you more evolution of the song, keeping the listener engaged and interested, right? Okay, so that is technique one, doubles. The a key here is that you're as tight as you possibly can be in your tuning and in your performance. I highly recommend at least considering vocal tuning here to just level it up even more. If you've never tried natural vocal tuning, I'll link to a video above here that I've gone in depth on that. I've already tuned these up a little bit, so these are a little bit tightened up in terms of performance, and that helps them gel together a little bit better. It's really, really helpful. The other thing with vocal doubles is that I record them the exact same way, the exact same microphone, the exact same distance. Occasionally, I might change out the microphone so there's a little bit of variation in tone, but I'm trying to get them generally as close as I can to the lead vocal so they just blend into it. Okay, let's look at technique two, vocal harmonies. Now, vocal harmonies are very similar to vocal doubles, except that you're literally singing something different. So instead of singing the exact same melody, you're singing a harmony of that melody. So for example, here we have the lead chorus line. It's like they're calling your name on the way back. Then we just have a normal double. Then we also have never get over it. low harmonies. Oh. So these are just singing this. It's like they're calling your name on the way back home. And then we have high harmonies. You never get over it. So technically, oh. I guess these are still lower, right? They're just below the lead vocal. But they help reinforce the lead vocal. Yeah, this song, he's kind of at the top of his range, so his harmonies are actually lower, but they help fill it out. It's like they're calling your name on the way back home. You never get over it. Oh. Right? 
Okay, so you can see how that helps fill out the sound in those vocals. Now, if you're new to harmonies, I recommend starting with very simple harmonies. So maybe just try an octave below or an octave above if those are in your range. If Other than that, start to branch out into thirds and fifths. And if you're really not sure how to do that, just go note per note based on what you're singing. Figure that out on the guitar or keyboard, wherever you're most comfortable. And then what is the next note in a chord that you would play for each of those notes? And then just practice that melody. It's going to be a different melody, but with a little bit of practice, you can definitely do it. And again, vocal tuning can really help here. So don't shy away from vocal tuning. Again, check out that vocal tuning video I linked above just a second ago. Okay, let's look at one other way that you can use this, again, to kind of add a little bit of change in the song uh, to keep it interesting and engaging for the listener. So here we have uh, the harmonies coming in and out in different positions. With the strangers that we were Big and wide. Remember Small and narrow. Choices at the house we used to live, where the memories feel like voices. It's like they're calling your name on the way back. So again, keeps the listener engaged, right? So play around with vocal harmonies. These can really, really help out. But let's go and jump back into our other song for technique three, distant vocals. Now, distant vocals are exactly what they sound like, and they're probably easier to pull off than harmonies. They're literally just where you are distant from the microphone. So let's listen to them, and then I'll show you how you can get them in your song. So here's our distant vocals in this song. Every day the universe expands. But I'm still stranded here, dressed in my face. Right? Okay. So it's not that hard to get. You just go to the other side of your room and sing at a wall. So if this is your microphone right here, instead of being right up on the microphone, you could go back. You could sing at the microphone. You could sing literally straight at that wall. So I might be over here singing straight at that wall, and do a couple different takes varying where you are in the room relative to the microphone. Maybe stand literally on the exact opposite side facing away from the microphone singing at that wall. That's gonna give you like a crazy different sound. And it just adds this textural element. Listen to these vocals with these far vocals in here, these distant vocals, and then I'll take them out. And notice how it's so much richer with them in. Every day the universe expands, but I'm still stranded in. Dressed in my face Every day we keep racing through space But I'm so stuck in place So stuck in place Right? It, it's small, but it's also huge at the same time. It really, really helps these vocals just have a little bit more texture, and it's such an easy one to pull off. I highly recommend playing around with this one. As you can see here, I only did two in this song, but they really help add texture to those lead vocals. You could try a few more if you really like the sound of that in your song, play around with a few more. And again, you could do these with harmonies, or you can just do them with your main lead doubled melody, just singing in a different place in the room. Okay, so that is technique number three. Technique number four is gang vocals. Now, gang vocals is where you need at least two people. So, for example here, I'll put up a clip of how we recorded this. We had just two guys uh, that are in our band sing at different positions in the room. So, one was closer to the mic for one take of the song, and then they switched, and they moved further, and then they switched positions. They sang less towards the mic, more of the wall. They, they did all sorts of different stuff. And it gives you a sound like this. Every day the universe expands. And when you blend that in with the song, it sounds like a gang of people singing along. Every day the universe expands, but I'm still standing there, dressed in my face. Every day we keep racing through space, but I'm so stuck in place. Right? And it's not mixed super loud. It's not meant to be like the prominent focus of this part, but it helps flesh it out, right? So gang vocals are really, really easy to accomplish. Just get a buddy. They don't have to be great singers. Part of the beauty of this is that it isn't meant to be a perfect performance. It's meant to be tucked in and to give a sense of like an audience singing to some extent. And audiences aren't great singers a lot of the time, right? So having an element of imperfection is actually really helpful here. 
To be clear, I do not recommend vocal tuning on far distant vocals or on gang vocals. If you have more than one person, you can't vocal tune. And with the far ones, the sound of the room when it gets tuned can get a little bit wonky. It can work, so if you really have to, you know, do it if you need to. But generally speaking, I don't recommend vocal tuning for those. Okay, so that's technique number four. And finally, we have technique number five, which is vocal pads. Now, I love vocal pads, and I don't think I've talked about them on this channel before, but I used to use them in like every song I produced. They add such an organic sound, and I don't know, there's just a cool breathiness to them that I, there's nothing else that does what a vocal pad does. So a vocal pad is where you're just sustaining it's off in an ooh or an ah, and you're just holding the notes of the key of the song. You can do them in chords, or you can just do single notes. Obviously, you do a single note at a time, but you could layer multiple different notes in harmony and create a chord. Either way, so I want to show you a really, really, really simple example here that adds so much in this section. So I'm going to show you just a few bars before, and then you'll hear when these vocal pads come in down here. Check it out. Okay, let's listen to them in solo really quickly. So no harmony here, just two single notes recorded twice. So two different vocal takes, pin one far left, pin one far right. And these are fairly tuned. I just wanted them to be really, really accurately on the note. Uh, so again, don't shy away from tuning if you need it. So you can hear it a little bit here, but in the context of the mix, it sounds really natural still. Cool, right? Okay, so vocal pads, I love them. It's just a different approach that you don't see very often, but can really help add just this layer to your song. It's a breathiness, yet a fullness. It's really warm and organic sounding. I don't know. I love vocal pads. Definitely try them out. So before you go, be sure to grab the Ultimate GarageBand Guide for free from link in the description below. It's really gonna help you out. It has recording, mixing, mastering, shortcuts, gear recommendations, all that good stuff. It's completely free in the link in the description below. And I always would like to hear from you, which of these techniques have you been using in the songs you've recorded so far? and are there any that you're going to try in upcoming mixes? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. If this video is helpful, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow where we're finishing out our recording with a few production touches that I like to call the sauce. See you there. One thing